Just want to give a little heads up. I know most of my vlogs are like fun and family. This isn't a fun movie. This isn't a happy movie. This is I have a big announcement. So I spent the past week or so doing what I do best, being a YouTube stalker. Maybe I shouldn't call myself that anymore. YouTube SUV detective. SUV? I boiled it down to three basic things that you can apply to your videos, your vlogs, whatever video content you want. In order to explain, let me go back to this morning. Contrary to popular opinion, vlogging is not just about showing off your boring life. Not if you want to make your vlogs go viral on YouTube like Casey Neistat. You see, his main goal is actually to entertain. Yeah, baby, like look at this! Look at the water! not to share every single little detail of his personal life to the public. And that's not me saying Casey did. Never an obligation to share with you the intimacies of every day of my life. This isn't a journal. But instead, could I find every day in my life a three-act narrative to share? I know Casey's really good at story, but he's also really good at getting people to click on his videos. Look at the bike lanes video. The thumbnail is hilarious. He's literally about to plant face first into the concrete right after he hit a police car on his bike. Or how about finding out I can never run again? The title really makes you want to click. You're insanely curious about how that even happened. What's so genius about these titles is that they're basically the inciting incident of the video. It's the most interesting part to make you click. The idea for the movie, as Casey would call it, is the most important part of the video before he even starts filming. The thing is, Casey was not always good at this. For example, a video titled Just Me Talking would not normally get 700,000 views unless you are Casey Neistat. You don't know you're clicking on a vlog when you're clicking on a really good vlog. You just think you're clicking on another random video on the internet. But once he gets you to click, he gets the show on the road. The party moving on. The party going on. And so we start with act one. Casey has mastered the art of holding your attention for the first 30 seconds. If you didn't already know, it's really common for a lot of people to click off of your video in the first 30 seconds or so. Typically your intro. On a side note, I have no idea why anyone would do that. That's not how I watch YouTube videos. Once I've clicked on a video, I'm pretty much committed to at least halfway through the video. But moral of the story, people are really ADD, I guess. He usually starts the video with the most interesting part of the video right at the beginning. That's the, uh, that's the GoPro Karma in flight right there. Unlike most people on YouTube where they kind of bury the most important parts somewhere in the middle of the video, making it really frustrating to find what you actually came to the video for. For example, in Casey Neistat's video, My First Vlog, he basically starts with this statement. I have a big announcement to make. And then he rewards you with so much visual stimulation that you can't click away. Uh, so sorry. In this video, he's basically just doing a talking head video, but he intercuts it with a b-roll and events from the past to illustrate what he's saying in a funny and entertaining way. I sat at my computer and counted every single shot that went by. He literally uses a new shot every two seconds. That was literally a rule that I was taught as I was training to become a storyboard artist in Hong. But the reason why I rarely applied that to my own YouTube videos was because it was so difficult to achieve that many different types of shots. Especially for me being a little bit of a stickler for composition and cinematography. I would lug around this tripod, this camera, this whole entire rig, and it would be a bit to set up every single shot to have the perfect, most aesthetic shot ever. So I became a little bit lazy and I would just set up one shot, one talking head shot, just so I could meet my deadline of posting one to three times a week. In that Casey, he found a better solution than I could ever come up with. He pared down his camera setup. Take a second to talk about camera equipment, namely this thing here. Instead of perfect, he went for good enough. In one of his drone videos, he talks about why he uses three different types of cameras to shoot his vlog. He uses a nice expensive camera like this one. He just uses it on a gorilla pod. I tried it out and I have to say it is amazing. Let's zoom in for this shot because it's really important. It's made setting up all these shots that I'm setting up for this video right now take no 
time at all. Compared to the five to 15 minutes of struggle that I have with my tripod, every single time I have to set up a shot. I understand now why Casey uses this instead of all the other fancy equipment that he has. I feel like I have been vlogging wrong this entire time. You'd think that that'd be obvious for me, but it is not. And he doesn't do this just because he feels like it. It's to keep you entertained and watching as he's giving you backstory. Basically the exposition of why you should even care about the entire video. But let me start this morning back in New York City. Typically, exposition is really, really, really boring. That's why when you watch a bad movie or TV show, it's mostly the character not doing anything, just explaining to you what they're about to do. When you're just like, get to the point. That brings us to act two, the conflict. What do we do? In his video, My First Vlog, he sets up the conflict of his story so well throughout the entire video. Conflict is the number one thing that will keep people watching all the way through. Basically, think of your favorite TV show, your favorite anime, whatever it is that you watch. Don't you hate it when they end on a cliffhanger? Because that just means instead of going to bed, you're gonna spend all night long binging all of the episodes. Any kind of conflict, even in the middle of a video, will do that. So in the My First Vlog video, there are multiple different conflicts. One, does he get to the airport on time? Two, when he arrives to the island, where is his friend's house? He doesn't know, he might get lost and die. Stay tuned to find out. Will he be able to find all his family members and bring them to the house? One of the most interesting things he talks about when doing these daily vlogs is that I spend eight hours a day sitting at my computer writing emails and doing conference calls, which doesn't like fare well for a really exciting daily vlog. He talks about choosing the one interesting thing that he is doing that day and making the entire vlog be about that one thing. And he actually adds quite a bit of sound design and sound effects as that little sprinkle on top to get you to continue to pay attention all the way through. I'm still spending time at MIT. He does not leave anything in the video if it doesn't serve to move the story forward. He always films people in action, him in action, or something funny. If someone if someone is saying something funny or doing something funny, throw it in there because it'll keep people's attention. You're freaking out. I just don't want it in the room! Honey, it's the cutest little, friendliest little lizard. He has nowhere to go. And the conflict builds, 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 and before you know it, we're in act three. The climax and the resolution. The climax is the most exciting part of the video. It's the part that you've all been waiting for. You went through this entire chaotic journey to getting to this tropical island to see if Casey Neistat is able to finally celebrate his birthday. This is typically the shortest act. He doesn't overstay his welcome and try to spend a thousand years just to milk what you are here for. Once he knows, you, the viewer, got what you wanted, he ends abruptly almost every single vlog. There's no reason for you to stay, so you are going to click out. He also understands it's really important to follow through on what the video is about. Otherwise, you clickbaited people and they're not going to want to watch all the other videos on your channel. What you want to do is to get people to binge, which is why you need the video to pay off at the end. What he doesn't do is color correct. He doesn't always have the nicest shots with the nicest camera. Even though he has all the drones in the world, he only uses them for transitions to get from one place to the next without having to waste too much time. What he ends up with is a super entertaining video that is uniquely his own. You can watch it over and over and over again and be entertained the same way you can watch reruns of your favorite TV show. The idea, the inciting incident, the conflict and resolution are all things we all need to think about in order to get more views and to become successful here on YouTube. And for me, I have an extra goal of getting you to hit that like button and to watch these other similar videos next. 